everyone. It's Meredith Leon McCormick for World Bride Magazine. And we are here again doing another one of our WBM Summer Series. And we want to thank all of you guys for your continued support. Continue to support us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Like I promised you, we were going to bring our most intimate conversations to you with some of the most wonderful, talented, gifted artists, professionals in the industry. And I have the honor of having this conversation with one of the beauty industry's most respected beauty artists, makeup artists. Now I'm going to ask you to correct me when I say your name. Michaela, we are, we are AB? No. We're AB. Did I say that right now? Close, close. It, it's Correct me. Michela Warrior. Michela Warrior. Okay, Michela Warrior. Did I do it right now? Yes. Yay! Yes. And I am not too <laughs> shy to say that I don't know something and ask to be corrected because it is the most respectful thing to do is to honor somebody by pronouncing their name correctly. And I want to show you the utmost honor. Thank you for the correction. Thank you, I appreciate that. So please, can you give us a brief history on who you are in the industry? What brought you into the beauty, the beauty arena? Um, I, well, I've been a makeup artist for about 10 years um, and eight years of that time, I've been fully dedicated to makeup, uh, sometimes fully as an artist, sometimes uh, in other roles, but I came into the industry really on a part-time basis, really just trying to be cute at the counter. As um, you are. Annoying, <laughs> thank you. Annoying all the girls at the mat counter, asking all the questions, um, and uh, got a part-time job at a, a counter while I was also maintaining a full-time job in information systems uh, sector. That's where my background is. And um, I really started loving it because I saw the relationship between makeup and art where makeup really is using uh, makeup artistry, like actual makeup products as your medium with human faces or bodies as the canvas, but it's art nonetheless. And uh, so my love and appreciation for the craft started to grow there. And in 2012, I went full time uh, doing makeup. Wow, what a history. Now that mm -hmm. takes boldness and courage to be able to say, I'm going to keep going and I am going to go to you and ask you questions until I figure out what I want to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that Very was amazing. Well. So now you have your, you have this talent for body art and painting. Mm -hmm. Do you have a art background of sorts because it seems that you're incorporating that into the work the body of work that you do yes um i mean art underlies everything that i do with makeup both in classic beauty on the face and on the body because makeup is based on uh, classic art principles um and i don't really have a strong art background i've taken art classes mm -hmm. uh, i draw still life um and things of that sort and uh but not like I didn't go to art school or anything. I think I have an inherent talent. And as I continue to try to hone my technical skills there, uh, it just, you know, what is already there is like kind of elevated. Wow. So now let's go back to your cultural background. Okay. You are from the continent of Africa. Yes. But give us a little history about where in Africa you're from. Okay, so I was born in Liberia, um, and I'm also half Nigerian. My mother's Liberian, but my father is Nigerian, and we immigrated here in 1990, so I was pretty young, but uh, the way our culture works, um, and because so many of us immigrated at the same time due to a civil war, we kind of created our own little communities and right. grew up eating our food, having our cultural standards, as opposed to what was the standard in, like, you know, the community around us. Um, and so that, you know, has influenced greatly who I am, my work, how I view art and the aesthetics and things of that sort. 
and your work, your social media is absolutely brilliant. It's Thank reflective you. of your culture, um, your makeup, your attentiveness to black skin and mm -hmm. just skin in general, you know, yeah. but particularly to black skin, how you're able to mix it. Do you feel that your cultural background has influenced it to the point where you can't, and that's, that's where your love for color and texture comes from? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. I think culture um, influences who we are inherently and how we see things, regardless of what industry you work in. And if you are working in a visual industry, mm -hmm. even more so. Um, so with me working as a makeup artist and body painter, uh, you know, the textures of the Nigerian lace, the Ankara, the, you know, the Liberian country cloth and uh, the masquerade and all those things, uh, regardless of if you recognize it or not, they're definitely going to be made manifest in your work. And, you know, which leads me to the greatest part that I wanted to ask you, because I can't stop thinking about it. You just worked with Beyonce. Well, not just. The film, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, Black is King just came out, and you did the body yeah. paint. Magnificent. Yeah. Please tell us about that, that experience, and what was so, the inspiration? Um, there were a couple of body paints uh, for Beyonce and the whole Black is King project, and I did the one that was for the Already video, um, and the other ones were done by the incomparable Francesca Tola. So people have been mixing up the work a lot, so I just want to make sure that she gets her due credit as well. Okay. Um, so I did the one with Beyonce and the tree, and uh, a lot of it was inspired by, um, you know, traditional West African uh, art, um, as well as um, some iconic body art from the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we just made it be and relevant to what they were trying to create. But yeah, that was the design I came up with. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So now the reason why I wanted to even have this conversation with you because um, you got inspiration based on the culture, a region, a people, and everything mm -hmm. else. And when we tell our brides to look for a makeup artist and to look for a hairstylist, we tell them if you're not getting an artist that is able to convey um, narrate a story that you want and work on your body, your skin, your hair, that way, I think you're making a mistake, you know, mm -hmm. so yeah. one doesn't go without the other, because, you know, it shouldn't be that day that she wants to try the purples and the blues that she wants, you know, it has to be themed, you know, yeah, so wonderful. can you give our brides some tips and, and hiring you, first of all, and how to hire any beauty professional? Yeah, I think um, when you're trying to hire a beauty professional, it's about the right fit. Um, and I think what you said is so important about someone understanding about telling a narrative, because I think people sometimes don't think that's important for a wedding, but weddings are themed events. And so the bride's aesthetic should be honoring that theme. You know, if you're doing great Gatsby, then maybe this isn't the time for you to be doing like a sharp wing in a cut crease. Like <laughs> that's not it, you know, that you need someone that understands how to create a mood or moment or to complement what you've created with the aesthetics of your wedding and the floral design and whatnot. So, um, you know, when you speak to a bridal artist, one, there has to be a, a, like a level of connection there because right. The makeup artist is typically the last person that the bride is working with before she puts her dress on. Yep. Dress or suit or whatever, you know? And um, so it's important that there's a connection there because we are not just playing the role of makeup artists at that point. We are like, you're calm. You know, we're keeping things settled. We are just allowing you to focus on the fact that you're about to meet your partner down the aisle. And uh, so it has to be that connection. And then um, that person has to understand what you're aiming for, who you want to be on that day. And they use their expertise to help you tell that story. You know, you may think you want a smoky eye, but there's so <laughs> many different smoky eyes. Right. So the person needs to be able to convey that to you in layman's terms based on their expertise to say, this is the dress you've shown me. You've told me this is your aesthetic. This is where you're doing your, you know, having your nuptials and ceremony and reception. Right. And this is what you've told me. And I'm presenting to you also what I think from my informed expertise. 
Exactly. And um, it should be a, a, a comfortable meeting of the minds that, a, right. that leaves the bride feeling excited that maybe you guys reached a meeting point that's even better than what she, you know, thought she may have wanted. Exactly. And, and I love the fact that you made that point because it's not, you show me a picture and I want you to make me look, make me look like Beyonce. And you're like, no, that's not going to happen. But Make you're not allowed. <laughs> you're not allowed as a, as a professional that they hired mm -hmm. to give them a honest feedback and say, hey, this would suit you better based on this. So I love that comment that you made. So now the other part that I really want to touch about, what kind of products, um, what are some of your favorite products that you like in your kit and would recommend that everybody should have in their beauty bag? Um, honestly, even I know because I'm a makeup artist, if you know, people would think I would say this concealer and whatnot. It's skincare. Everybody mm -hmm. needs skincare. Everybody the 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 men the women and everybody that identifies fluid on the spectrum or otherwise everyone needs skincare if you have skin you need skincare <laughs> so <laughs> like uh you know you need to you need to have a cleanser a toner and a moisturizer at the baseline and if you remember dial up internet or anything before that you definitely need a serum too mm -hmm. <laughs> so which leads to the yeah. fact that you have your own school where you're educating other professionals as well as consumers about products, skincare, and getting services, especially yeah. during COVID. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about your educational programs? Yes. So, um, well, during the time of COVID, obviously, we're not doing any of the things that are in person. Um, but uh, my typical educational offering, I have a intense two-day masterclass for makeup pros. Um, and then right now, I have digitally, I have one skin theory class where you can learn about determining your skin type, you know, uh, developing a skincare routine, and really how to just take care of your skin and do basic makeup. And then um, I also consult virtually with people in just like mastering their own makeup routine, whether it's just like applying a lash or, you know, how do I do my brows or perfecting their foundation? Or um, I do a lot of like makeup bag building where I'm helping them find the products that are going to meet their needs. And that's how, you know, we're really adjusting to offer that education during the time of COVID. I love that. And I know you're very strict about sanitation, um, mm -hmm. protection, you yes. know, for yourself and as well as your client, you know, so for yes. you, it, was it hard making the transition of following the CDC programs that they have, which is very extensive? Yeah, no, for me, it wasn't hard at all. Um, I've always, uh, held sanitation to a high standard, uh, as makeup artists, we work with mucous membranes. So we've always been working with transmission points for disease. And so it was, it, it has always been imperative that we should have been operating at these standards. Um, I think the only adjustment for me, truth be told, is the mask and the face shield. I'm just hot. Like it's, <laughs> that's a pretty, I'm like, I'm hot. Um, so other than that, you know, I'm happy to keep things safe as possible for the people that sit in my chair or stand on my stool when I'm body painting or otherwise, you know, um, I care to keep those people safe. So I always am committed to that, but, I'm waiting for the time where I don't have to have a full hazmat suit on anymore. <laughs> well, we're so proud of you and all your accomplishments. Amazing job that you did on with with Miss Beyonce, Queen Bee herself. It was Thank amazing, you. gorgeous. It says a lot about you. And from what I hear, it's been you've been on that project. It, this happened a year ago, and you kept that under wrap for that long. One, one year. One year. What? It's like absolutely pretty, it's, brilliant. It's like exactly a year from like now. Wow. And so for me, that says a lot about you, about confidentiality. So mm -hmm. anybody that's looking for this private soiree, wedding event or whatever, and you're looking for somebody that can keep their mouth shut, you know, you might be the right person. Oh, this is a vault. Like I can hold the secret. <laughs> I can hold the secret. We love that. So are there any last minute tips and where we can find you? Um, and how they can book you, you'd like to tell our readers and viewers? 
Yes, uh, you can find me via all social media platforms. Um, uh, Insta well, not all. The Instagram and Twitter uh, is Mikella Wariab, and uh, you can find me on my website at MikellaWariab.com. Um, and if you want to stay in touch, you can join my mailing list at stayintouchwithmikella.com. Wonderful. And your classes, when are they starting for any of the professionals that are looking? Um, I'll probably be back to doing in-person professional classes uh, come spring. Okay. Um, I want to make sure that everybody is safe. And we work with models, so it's always a lot of people in okay, makeup. Education. Um, but I we will be offering a lot more digital education in the upcoming months for pros and consumers alike. Uh, so there's, there's a lot coming down the line even before we start doing in-person education. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time again. You are a gem and I am so proud. And ladies and gentlemen, what I failed to tell you, she was one of the makeup artists that held, um, that did one of our most special covers stories. It was the contest that we do with Real Brides, Real Beauty. And she made these brides feel so special. She made them feel and look like they were Beyonce, you know, to the point that they still have followed you. I watched them, they follow you. They're obsessed with you, Michaela. They love you. They love you. I'm still, I'm actually still in touch with, uh, I'm still in touch with two of those brides. Yeah, they love you because you, you make people feel special. It's not a, oh, you're a celebrity and you're not. You make each woman that sit, each person that sits in, in your chair special. So thank you for that. You know, and we're honored that you graced our pages, you know, with your work. So thank you again. So guys, please, oh, it's my pleasure. Everyone, I want you guys to please follow her on her website. We're going to give you all the information. And we want you guys, if you are planning a soiree and you need a professional, a beauty professional, please reach out to her. And I guarantee you will not be disappointed. And any work, Instagram is the hottest thing to stalk her on. I, I do it. So please go ahead. So until the next time, please keep up with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Ciao, Bella.